All right, my friends, you're in for a treat. Our next speaker is a recent graduate of Cornell. She showed up and was not satisfied with all the options available to her. She created her own major at one of the most prestigious universities in the country. And it wasn't something vague and about economic empowerment. It was literally just Bitcoin. That was her major. She's a junior fellow at the Cornell Bricks Tech Policy Institute. She co-founded the Bitcoin Students Network at Cornell. She is a founder of the Cornell Bitcoin Club. She recently gave a tech talk on Bitcoin. And if that wasn't enough, she is the Bitcoin Advocacy Associate at Strategy with Michael Saylor. Please welcome Ella Huff. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here. My name is Ella Huff, and I am a junior fellow at the Cornell Brooks Tech Policy Institute, where I have the immense fortune to work with Professor Sarah Kreps and about 20 other students at Cornell on the first of its kind study looking at Bitcoin adoption across 25 countries. So over the past year, we've conducted the largest ever cross-national survey of Bitcoin with Morning Consult, surveying 25,000 individuals across 25 countries and conducting about 250 in-depth interviews. And to date, there hasn't been a study, to our knowledge, um, focusing on Bitcoin adoption in this way, using this mixed method approach of both quantitative and qualitative data. And we can do so from a grant from the Human Rights Foundation and the Reynolds Foundation. Now, at the outset, we looked at about 178 countries around the world, and then we looked at 18 different factors of interest and narrowed it down to the 25 countries that are currently in the study and were selected. And most relevant for this audience, one goal that is really top of mind is to give policymakers, businesses, educators a baseline understanding of who's using Bitcoin, where are they using it, why are they using it, so that decisions can be made grounded in evidence. And for the past three months, we have started sharing preliminary insights before the full report is out this coming spring. And today, I am grateful to be able to share some of this data with you um, with a focus on data from the US. But for a bit of context, to date, there's about 35 other charts out there which you can find on our website um, if you'd like in the meantime. So beginning as a baseline, we wanted to ask who's aware of Bitcoin? And right now, the global average of awareness for Bitcoin is about 90%. Notably, this is much higher than awareness of any other cryptos. Um, the second most known, they all fall under 50%. However, while Bitcoin is pretty much universally known, a more true understanding of Bitcoin and what it offers lags further behind. Um, and it's perhaps one of the most actionable and impactful realities that we can change. So today, on average, only 13% of respondents know one of the most fundamental aspects of Bitcoin, which is that it has a supply cap. In fact, more people believe that it does not have a supply cap than know that it does. Um, whereas the majority, still 66%, simply don't know. And so this um, knowledge gap makes clear that widespread familiarity with Bitcoin does not necessarily translate into true comprehension of what it is and the solution that it can provide in our world. So looking at the US data, US focus, compared to the global averages that we just shared, Americans fall below in both awareness and understanding. So today, about 85% compared to about 90%, um, or 220 million Americans, 18 and up, are aware of Bitcoin. But only 5%, or about 13 million Americans, know of Bitcoin's supply cap. And this is actually a lesser percent um, than respondents in every other country in the study but Mexico and Japan. Looking now at some of the ownership data, Across all of the countries, on average, 30% of respondents have ever or currently owned Bitcoin, but only 13% currently do. 
And again, as you can see, the U.S. does lag behind many other countries in the study in terms of ownership. Today, while about 24% of Americans um, have ever owned Bitcoin, only 12%, or about 32 million Americans, own Bitcoin. And notably, just for context, in other research that has been done, this is a slightly lower percent than what was found in the Nakamoto Project's report. However, very similar to the Nakamoto Project's report, ownership is still highest among men, uh, men in the millennial age range, and that come from a higher income and higher education level. So next in terms of how Americans actually hold the Bitcoin that they own. From this chart, you can see that a very small percent, about 4%, self-custody Bitcoin through a physical hardware wallet. Um, and notably, actually a much higher percent, 17% in the US report owning Bitcoin through the ETFs, which will be two years old this coming January. And building on this custody data, um, looking at some of the uh, motivations for owning Bitcoin, the top reason across the board to own Bitcoin was due to an investment. Um, and this was the same top reason in the US as well, compared to the 11 other options that we asked about. Um, some other prominent reasons to own Bitcoin were to escape inflation, um, as well as to increase personal freedom. And next, following these motivations as to why own Bitcoin, looking at the opposite angle of why people have never owned Bitcoin or choose to not currently own Bitcoin, um, it's perhaps not surprising that the most common reason people don't own Bitcoin today is because of profit taking. They've sold their Bitcoin. This is then followed by just simple lack of interest, um, which is also not surprising given how few people truly understand the solution that Bitcoin's offering. Other concerns such as volatility, environmental concerns, regulatory or legal complexity are far less prevalent um, than maybe we might think. And looking forward, this is quite hopeful because many mer barriers don't, um, they're not necessarily permanent. They might be practical, situational, or quite solvable with the right tools and education. And finally, among the respondents who said they have never or don't currently own Bitcoin, the top catalyst of adoption would be if, number one, they simply had more money. Next, followed by if they had greater understanding of Bitcoin and if they felt Bitcoin were easier to use, which again very much reflects the data that we started this presentation with. And finally, this is the QR code where you can go on our website and find all of the data free to download. Um, and at the core of this study, it's really about human agency and financial freedom. And this study is giving us a global baseline, a starting point for understanding Bitcoin adoption and the impact it's having on society. And so we really invite you to reach out to our team, collaborate with us um, in ways that we might be able to support your work. In this spring, the final report will be published, and along with the report being published, all of the 25,000 survey data will be open sourced for anyone, anywhere to use as would be helpful to them. But over the following months, and even after the report is out, if there's anything that our team can do to support you, we welcome any questions, any insight you'd like to share, and we'll be glad to continue the conversation. Thank you all.